Thank you. Um, it's hard to believe it's been 20 years uh, since Sir Tim Berners-Lee and the web has started. And uh, happy birthday, Tim. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I want to acknowledge Minister Kamal. I want to extend my deepest gratitude to you, the government of Egypt, and the IGF for inviting me to speak at this important ga gathering. Um, I'm honored to be here in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, with so many people who share a similar passion about the internet and the opportunities and the doors it opens for people around the world. I also want to thank the Prime Minister, who has taken a leading role in developing the Egyptian and communication internet landscape. I also want to uh, offer my appreciation to the United Nations and the Under Secretary General Shah Khan for opening invitation to the IGF. And I would also like to recognize all the other delegations from around the world. What I want to talk about today uh, is a bit of a reflection on the profound impact the internet has already had um, and the importance of connecting more people on this planet online, especially those in developing worlds and emerging markets, and how all of us, um, as leaders of business, governments, academia, journalism, civil society, and the broader user community, can help to get the next billion people online. Just as importantly, to ensure that we deliver meaningful experiences and content to this next global wave of internet consumers. As some of you may know, um, my partner David Filo and I co-started Yahoo um, almost 15 years ago in 1994. Uh, Yahoo started out as a hobby. Uh, in fact, the first name we called it was Jerry and David Guide to the World Wide Web. And um, I'm glad we didn't keep that name. Um, but pretty soon we realized people had a fun experience when they were looking on the internet and looking for things and they used Yahoo to find what they were looking for and they were so happy and they called Yahoo and we put an explanation behind our name and off we went. When we started there were fewer than 10 million people globally on the internet. That's less than one third of one percent of the world population back then. The internet backbone traffic at that time amounted to 17 terabytes per month. Back then, people talked about online bulletin boards, and the mobile internet was unheard of. But there was a sense among the those in technology and engineering circles that there was, this was the beginning of something huge. We had a passion to create a community of knowledge and information, and to come connect local communities to the people of the world. We understood from pioneers like Tim and Vince Cerf that there was a tremendous amount of social value to the web, and we had an opportunity to make big and positive impact in people's lives. Back then, the internet was built on the same foundations and ideals as today. Openness, freedom of expression, universal access, global participation, and the power of information. So where are we now? In 2009, as has been mentioned, it's been more than 1.6 billion people on the internet about 25% of the world population. Their internet backbone traffic exceeded 8 million terabytes a month, about a 500,000 fold increase since 15 years ago. Today there are more than 200 million websites, 90,000 new sites being created a day. And on Yahoo, we have over 600 million people visiting us every month, and 8 billion minutes spent on the, from those visitors. There are 300 million Yahoo email users sending 100 billion messages a month. 112 million people on our Yahoo instant messaging sending 81 billion messages each month. And there are 120 million people in what we call Yahoo groups communicating across 10 million different groups of activity, everything including local schools, sports, to diseases, and support groups. What's astonishing are not those just numbers. It's the impact the internet has had on so many people around the world. From social economic opportunities, to the ability to provide better health care, educating the next generation of students and entrepreneurs. The internet today is about the intersection of the world we all live in, and my world, my friends, my family, my community, my social network, and my work. So, the power of the internet and the ability of the communities to connect is something amazing. Whether it may be enabling farmers in Africa, 
to bank online to get better pricing for their props, or students downloading curriculum so they can study. I want to share just a couple of examples from our Yahoo experience that demonstrates the power of the internet. Like no other medium, the internet has had tremendous value to mobilize people for the good. A few years ago, Hurricane Katrina devastated the southern coastline of the United States. People around the world wanted to find ways to help, and Yahoo was able to use our website to raise over $57 million from 400,000 people in two weeks. The first $42 million came within the first 48 hours. And just recently, Yahoo in the Philippines used Flickr, Yahoo's online photo sharing site, to create a database of missing people from the typhoon Katan. This database helped family find friends and family members um, who were missing in this disaster. In Yahoo groups, we see 10 million different groups that are serving different needs. One of them is called the Yahoo group for they're called the Development Cafe, which offers job postings and knowledge sharing free of cost, which is particularly welcomed by the members from emerging economies. This successful group has been included in the Global Poverty Network listed, hosted by the UNDP. These are just a few examples, and there are countless from other Yahoo services and other web services in general. So as we look at all this progress, the question is what's next? We're still missing three out of every four people that walk this planet online. We need to close this gap and get the next billion people online, and then the next billion after that. But before we discuss how to get the next billion, we also must ask who are the next billion? Half of the next billion users are expected to come from emerging markets and developing countries. Many will also come from aging populations in both the established and emerging markets, and from those with accessibility challenges. These are very important audiences. Let me just focus on the large underserved audience, those citizens living in emerging markets. Today, there are approximately 325 million internet users in what we call the emerging markets. And that number is expected to grow 19% annually through 2012. Many will come from less affluent populations in semi-rural areas, relatively poor, young, and enthusiastic with a great capacity to learn. Many will need what content and want more content in their native languages. And still others don't, won't just be bound by languages and barriers, but have other challenges such as reading, literacy, and other concerns. The internet can definitely transform lives, societies, and economies in emerging markets, but there are three aspects I would say we have to focus on. Access to the internet, content and user experiences, and our, our responsible engagement in those markets. First, there are plenty of brilliant minds in this room working on the, on the access part. This is critical for introducing more people to the internet. We need to increase access, whether it's broadband, mobile, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, to bring the internet within reach to more people. Historically, we've seen that when broadband penetration reaches around the 20% mark, like Egypt is, we see that tipping point. We see the rapid acceleration in internet adoption. And there's another benefit. According to the 2009 World Bank report, for every 10 percentage point increase in high-speed internet adoption in the population, there is a corresponding increase in economic growth of 1.3 percentage points. This is an area where government and private industry can partner. Private investments can help build infrastructure, but also must see a market opportunity. Clear and consistent government regulation can also help encourage private investment. Bringing down the cost of access is critical. At this, as, as this group is well aware, disposable income is minimal in emerging economies. Providing low-cost service or free internet at cafes can help drive more people online. Just as important as access, the content and user experience that we provide to the next billion is important. We are sometimes consumed by assigning numbers to our goals while losing sight of why we set them in the first place. The internet isn't just about getting as many people online as possible, but making sure that once they get online, they have something productive to do, something to gain, 
something meaningful to experience. We must provide relevant local content. We need to offer communication tools that enable people to connect their community and the larger world. And with the right tools, the internet can provide online commerce opportunities that help to lift people out of poverty. An encouraging move recently is the ICON decision to establish non-English language domain names. This is an important step in keeping the internet even more global. Internet growth and innovation is enhanced through international participation, and this program has the potential to help bring more people online who don't use Roman characters in their lives. At Yahoo, we're dedicated to localization. By being global but acting locally, we strive to bring consumers a more in-depth, relevant, and positive internet experience. We were the first to launch websites in many international markets. Currently, we operate over 40 different countries in 25 different languages. As many of you may be aware, we also recently acquired Mac2, the largest Arabic language internet site. According to the World Bank, there are more than 320 million Arabic speakers in the world, while less than 1% of all online content is in Arabic. The partnership between Yahoo and Mac2 aims to strengthen and support Arabic content on the internet, adapting current products to the Arabic language, while also working on local, with local developers to create new and compelling products. So for example, Yahoo Mail and Messenger, among the leading communication tools in the world, will be made available in Arabic for the first time next year. Yahoo also offers user-generated community applications, such as Yahoo Groups and Yahoo Answers, through multiple languages. And this will also be in Arabic soon. As we develop content for the next billion internet users, ensuring that we are providing applications and content that work well on mobile platforms is also essential. The vast majority of people in emerging markets will first experience the internet on a mobile device. This mobile first generation is completely different than those who grew up with personal computers. There's 4.5 more times more mobile users than average PC users in those developing countries. For example, in India, it's up to eight times. So we need to go beyond just addressing the distribution of smartphones. Inexpensive mobile devices have gained significant traction in less developed towns across Africa and Asia. And those devices are also portals to the internet and to the vast amounts of information and opportunity. I'd like to talk briefly about how important it is to also engage in the uh, um, uh, in, in all these different markets in a responsible way. We recognize that political, social, and economic environments and markets around the world are deeply complex, a complexity that mirrors in the online world. This presents challenges for any company to a region, especially one in our industry. As an internet pioneer in these emerging markets, we've gained important insights and experience, and we're committed to responsible global engagement. This means being insensitive to local laws, customs, and norms while protecting and promoting the rights of our users. We believe our engagement in emerging markets can be a positive force by increasing access to information, a key IGF theme, as well as by supporting a thriving marketplace and exchange of ideas to bridging local, regional, and international communities with innovative communication tools. Our belief in both being responsible in the collective engagement is why Yahoo is a co-founding member of the Global Network Initiative, or GNI, a multi-year effort involving international group of information and communications companies, civil society organizations, academics, investors, and others. The members of GNI commit to protecting freedom of expression and privacy, partnering with others to ensure collective governance and accountability in promoting the GNI and its objectives throughout the world. All the things I've just discussed, access, local content, communication, and responsible engagement are connected, interrelated, and necessary to get the next billion people online and thriving. We all must be, need to be sure that we're educating the next generation of online consumers, whether young or old, about internet usage and about uh, keeping their kids safe online. This is an exciting time for our industry and for the growth of the global expansion of the internet. The internet can positively transform lives, societies, and economies. It can connect local communities to a much larger world. We have the opportunity to welcome another billion more people to the internet. 
And with that opportunity, we also have an enormous responsibility to ensure internet is ready for this eager group of future online explorers, entrepreneurs, scientists, educators, and leaders. We need to make sure what they have at their fingertips will enable them to prosper, and that collectively we will also benefit. And we can make this happen. And we need to continue to act. I will encourage further development of an internet based on openness, freedom of expression, privacy, universal access, global participation. I encourage more collaboration between public and private sectors to ensure we can tackle the most challenges collectively. I encourage the development of more local and relevant content. In business, we know the demand is already there, and we will play our part to meet those needs. I encourage internet users to continue to create local language content. I encourage governments to create rules that allow users to create that content to flourish. In closing, I am certain that this dedicated group of citizens from around the world here at the IGF can think and work collaboratively to create an environment that welcomes the next billion people to a vibrant and global internet. Thank you again to the IGF for giving me the great privilege to speak with you, and thanks to all of you for your commitment to help shape the internet in a positive way for the people of the world.